Francis, and I'm a professor of the history of science at Harvard University. As a historian of science, I study the development of scientific knowledge, how scientists study the natural world, how they collect and evaluate evidence, and how they decide when they have enough evidence to say that something is known scientifically. But I also study the flip side, which is science denial. My topic is breaking the wall of science denial. In recent years, we've seen skepticism about many scientific claims, and in some cases, outright rejection of science. Many people are reluctant to accept the reality of evolution. Political leaders across the globe have been willing, unwilling to act meaningfully to address climate change. And various groups and individuals at first denied the severity of COVID-19, then they questioned the efficacy of masking, and now many refuse to get vaccinated. These problems are particularly acute in the United States, but they are by no means restricted to the US. For many years, leaders in South Africa denied the reality of HIV AIDS. Climate change denial is very common in Russia and in parts of the former Soviet bloc. And people in many cultures of diverse religious and cultural persuasions have difficulty accepting that humans evolved from other creatures, just like the rest of life on Earth. Now, science denial is not a new phenomenon. It has been with us since Copernicus, Galileo, and Darwin. But in recent years, it has taken a particular hold and a particularly dangerous turn. Now, with climate change and COVID-19, it has literally become a matter of life and death. So what do we do about it? How do we break the wall of science denial? Many people think this is a problem of trust that people distrust science and we need to find ways to rebuild trust. Others think it's a problem of communication, that if only scientists would communicate more clearly and more effectively, the problem would be solved. My research shows that these views are not correct, that the wall we face is not primarily a matter of trust or communication. Polls show that people around the globe mostly have a very high level of trust in science. My research shows that the problem is political and cultural. People reject science that they perceive as threatening their political ideology, their religious faith, or their worldview. Leaders reject science that suggests the need for new policies that threaten powerful political and economic actors. And these powerful actors act to undermine our confidence in science in order to protect their interests. And so in different ways, these various groups act to foster distrust in science and to delay meaningful science-based action to protect ourselves from harms like COVID-19 and the damage of disruptive man-made climate change. So what do we do to break the wall of science denial? I think that we have to accept that science denial is primarily a political problem. Now this makes many people uncomfortable because science is supposed to be apolitical. In fact, many people are attracted to science. We turn to science because we see it as factual and apolitical. But if we can accept that this is political, then we can work to find ways to address the political concerns. And we can also find ways to call out the bad actors who are deliberately fomenting science denial and stop them. Music